can you get some towels for me, please? I'm really losing a lot of blood. You sound like you're from London. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot you. Hello, I'm John Boy McElroy and welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. I'm glad you can join us for this episode because it's a cracker. We're covering Cage Warriors 102 and it takes place in London on the 2nd of March. We've been chatting with all the big fighters from the card, including the main event, middleweight title challenger James Webb. Uh, Reese McKee returns for our latest chat, you're going to love it. And we also caught up with uh, Team Torres, Irishman Decky McLeanan, who schools us on a karate mindset. We're yeah, delighted to finally get him on the show. Uh, and also finally getting on the show is the sensation Mr Steve O'Keefe absolute pleasure to get his time man but first let's get to next gen MMA where we spoke with Skeletor himself Reese McKee hello welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast we're continuing with our coverage and build Cage Warriors 102 it takes place London on the 2nd of March pleased to say we have returning to the show Skeletor Reese McKee Reese, how you doing sir? I'm good mate thank you very much for having me back on Jamming man, last time we spoke, getting ready for Jefferson George, crafty striker man, I saw wee bits and pieces in that fight he's kicking game and when the two you threw down man, you, you always look so relaxed, Reece. like see, the face I've seen in Batman and then obviously more recently with George, like that jab always finds a home, you just look loose and loosey goosey and chilled, you always kind of been like, it's always been your style mate. Yeah, well, it kind of like it's actually it's kind of what I'm like in my personal life too, and Aye. you'll never really get me too out of character, like too riled up, so. <laughs> I find like that's why my fighting style is so calm because it's just kind of what I am, if that makes sense. So, right. and like a, a kind, a calm mindset is like definitely more dangerous than than someone who's more emotional and amped up. That's it, man. It helps you focus, I guess. That's the idea, isn't it? You're more focused if you're you're more tuned in, if you're relaxed, no distractions. Right, man. I mean, even at one point when he didn't really have your back, he had kind of over under, but he wasn't getting the hooks in. But uh, you did, you didn't look worried. You just. It was, a, it was a solid performance, man. You, you must have been well pleased. Yeah, thank you. No, like the preparation in the gym, like I'm in, I'm in, you know, like I don't mean this in any disrespectful way against my opponents, but the fights I have on a Saturday in that gym right. have me prepared for the, the worst of the worst. So right. um, once it comes to the fight time, you know, it's it's fairly, it's a fairly nice experience. Compared <laughs> to Does it feel that way? I like a welcome relief, almost like, no, I'm not saying a day off for it, but you know. Yeah, like obviously you know like it's important you know because it's the show day but like I know like I've already went through worse and uh, prepared harder and like uh, than what the fight could ever possibly be you know you think about the amount of hours you put in every week and uh, never mind for 8, 10, 12 weeks and then you know you've only got you've only got 15 minutes at the most to get through so it's all, right. all good no happy days mate I was watching uh, just before we came on air I was watching you're doing some vlogs for uh, Cage Warriors is this part of Cage Warriors or is it just something you're doing yourself these video video diaries you're doing yeah I had a I had a guy Jay Hanna uh, he came to me <clears throat> it's not actually official Cage Warriors but we're calling like these vlogs and like I've had a lot of interest and a lot of people like have have wanted to see more of the kind of behind the scene of what goes on. Right. So you know, I I have no problem putting my life online a wee bit. Uh, obviously, the role I'm in with MMA, like people are interested. So sure. you know, what I thought give people a bit more content and, and that's it. It's nice, man. It's nice to draw the curtain back a wee bit and uh, you get to see. You get, it's, it's good insight for us, you know, as his fans and. It's, I was stunned though when you said you were off to was you're off to Mickey D's first thing in the morning. I thought surely not. He's not going to McDonald's. You were there for the coffee, mate. Hi. Just for a coffee, man. I haven't. I don't really. Uh, I don't really eat too many McDonald's anyway. But uh, <laughs> I can't imagine. I'm, you def- I'm definitely prone to a coffee. Uh, you was another place you went to looking up like a posh coffee place. What was it? Uh, Middleton or something. That's the Middleton coffee. Hey. That that's that's the real coffee shop. But I, I would hey. I would eat there more. It's like. It's it's, 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 a top, it's a top spot if you're ever over this direction you have to you have to visit. So you like quite a like a coffee connoisseur then you any of your coffees? You know what though I, I would have said no but when I look at it from the outside in I guess I am because <laughs> I like I like going to all the hipster coffee shops right. so yes I am one of them guys. <laughs> there's a boy in my work kind of like that as well he's a nice guy now um, he's really nice coffee so there's a place just opened up um, around the corner. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a chain. Is it Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons, something like that. Oh, flip, yeah. So you maybe know what I'm on about. He always comes in with like a cinnamon latte kind of thing. I'm familiar with Tim uh, Hortons. Uh, they're one of them opened actually beside the <coughs> where I do my strength and conditioning. Right. There's a, we go to a Starbucks after the session, and a Tim Hortons opened beside it. So 
it's now I have to fight that temptation. Hi, that's it, man. It's kind of like when he comes in with his coffee, his place smelling like Christmas or the cinnamon. But uh, the look looks well tidy. I don't know. It's probably one of those places that charges you a fiver, though. I'm, I'm a bit of a cheapskate, Reese. I don't. Uh, <laughs> coffee's coffee to me, you know what I mean? I just drink it for the function of it. But there you go. You see, <clears throat> you know, I said the donut, I said, do the damage one is. You know, a green tea man, then, you know, I thought I'll fight your son, green tea and lemon and shit. Now. Oh, flip. I have a green tea. I have about two, no, about three cups of green tea a day and about two coffees. That's Oft. kind of what I look. Wired, my man. <laughs> mate, scrape you off yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, the rocker all the time. <laughs> so what happens when you get a busy schedule, mate. Heats uh, you up, heats you up being around the gyms. <laughs> no doubt. How's it been, man? Because obviously f- a few of the boys for this one are getting caught in the snow. Are you, you all right over there? Is it decent? It yeah, it I mean, it's, it's flipping cold. It's Aye. cold, but uh, no, nah, nothing, nothing to hamper anything, you know. It's um, no, it's just it's just cold, but like I'm used to, I'm used to the cold. That's it, those boys in the Northern Hemisphere. Did you see, uh, I'm going to be a bit off topic, sorry, I think I'm getting ADD or something. The, the, um, who was it? It was Masvidal at that, that press conference, the UFC, and there was a guy, did you see this? No. No. Just when we were talking about the weather, there was a guy asking uh, Masvidal, what do you think about Michael Bisping? Do you have more respect from him now, now that you've seen the weather in the UK? And everybody was just like, what? And then he kind of waited for him to explain the question. And then he just asked it the same way. And the guy was like, yeah, I don't know what you're saying, bro. <laughs> it's just such a fucking stupid question. That's a mad, that's a mad co- what? Was that not, was, was that not Mike Morgan that asked that? It was a guy, is it uh, Wall TV? Uh, uh, what uh, what uh, a yeah. question. How did he think of that? I don't know where he was, where he was meant to be going with this. I guess uh, English people like to talk about the weather, maybe British people in general, I don't know, but that was a weird one, man. I was just scratching my head going, eh? You're all about um, Anyway. Well, that was his big chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might be famous. I think he's went viral now, so went viral for the wrong reasons in a way. But, uh, aye, man. Hey, obviously, here, one of the things I was wanting to ask you, here I go again, off topic, uh, we were doing a live show, and uh, one of the things that comes up, like fan questions, um who's got the worst tattoos and the one that always comes to mind is uh, who's your man that's got the Johnny Cash one uh, Alan Belcher oh. have you seen that uh, yeah 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 I was just bad. thinking like because you, you've got plenty of ink have you uh, you must have seen some dodgy tats in your time mate you know what I thought you were going to say I thought you were going to say that someone said I have ah uh, mate I'd, even, I wouldn't even dare I would never dare <laughs> <laughs> no um, I don't like uh Ah, oh, flip. I don't know what he called. No, I don't like Brock Lesnar's for obvious reasons. How horrendous looking. Yeah, I don't like right. Cody Garbrandt. Cody Garbrandt has the worst tattoos. He's got so many though, right? Isn't he? He's I just... think he's got like Lucky or something on his neck or something grim. Or, but it's, it's just, I just don't like him as a, as a, as a fighter. So. <laughs> you don't like, what is it you don't like about him? He's just smug. <laughs> he's got smug organs about him, you know? Like, I think, yeah, I don't think. I don't think you can you you couldn't like him if you raised him. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, man. Yeah, that's a, they're all doing that now, especially in the UFC. Though, aren't they? They're all like playing that. Play, I don't want to say playing a character, but it is, isn't it? It's kind of. It's uh, why not say it? It's exactly what it is. Like, especially over here, like in the north and south, like we have like ninety five percent of our MMA community are playing a character or someone they want to be and. Aye. It's fucking like it's absolutely. It baffles me how people aren't their own person. Everybody, that's what everybody says to me. Oh, you're you're so yourself, and it's like, well, how well, the fuck you want me to be? Aye, of course, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like mental. Just be yourself. That's it. That's all you can rely on. Uh, one of the things that uh, someone told me, just going back to Cage Warriors, so the last time we spoke, because um, I know uh, uh, Tim Barnett was on that card, and someone mentioned that you guys were getting rounds in together, they're training or something. Is that right? No, we were meant to. I was meant to go over to Liverpool. Right. Um, I was meant to go over to Liverpool to train with him, just so you know, something to mix it up. But it just we actually like uh, we got a new puppy at the time, and it kind of it kind of messed stuff up on my hands. So it just didn't work out. But but we'll definitely get some training. We stay in contact. We probably text like a few times a month. So uh, Tim's a good lad, and we uh, we were talking at the la- after the last fight how we both taught each other such a, a valuable lesson in our careers. So. We played a big, a big part in both each, in each other's careers. That's really nice to hear. Like for those listening, don't know like uh, recent term, like you used to fight each other twice, like at uh, yeah. both victories over each other, man. So that's that's really that's really cool, man. He's a, he's a, so what? What do you say? You got a new puppy? What kind of dog you got, mate? I got a cocker spaniel. Nice man. Is that your first dog together? Is it you? It's, it's, 
Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, well, like I have a dog that's grown up, but this is like our, our first, like our own dog, and it's flipping, that's hectic, man, like, <laughs> it's like, she's just mental all the time, but she's a good little, she's a good, like, she's a, she's a good little walking buddy and stuff. Ah, yeah, that's good, man. So, the lightweight division, then, let's get to this, because Soren back, he's off the featherweight of fight room, and I don't even know if, if he's, has he vacated this title or what, I don't even know. What's yeah, happened. yeah, Has he, if he's vacated it? But, I, I mean, this, this opens the door for you, mate, like, Obviously, yeah. this is on your mind, so is this a plan for 2019 now? Right? My, ne- <clears throat> my next fight will be for the title. Yeah, yeah. this is That's you. That's it. This is, and it's, an, it's as bold as that, black and white in my eyes. My, right. my next fight will be for the title. Um, if I go in here, and the way I see it going in my head, when that happens... Like that, they they'll be screaming for me to have the belt, you know. So, uh, and like, I'm very, very excited for this, and um, it's, it's going to be a good night. And as you said, the lightweight division is wide open at the minute, so why not? Like, it seemed a bit odd that uh, back went down after that. It was a Paddy Pimlet when it that was a fight. Uh, I mean, Truman did well. I, 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 not a lot of people were picking him that I was speaking to in that fight uh, for for Lee, but I mean. It's, uh, yeah, man, you're right. It does. It blows things wide open. Opens the door for, for, for guys like yourself. Um, Terry Terry Brazier's a guy uh, that's on on the Bellator card, and uh, I, I was a fight. I was looking to see you guys throw down again. Obviously, from from yeah. that time in Cage Warriors. But I mean, you really did. You're no blowing smoke up your ass, mate. But you're like you're the you're the guy, man. You're the guy that steps in here. That, that's that's. I totally see it, and I'm sure you're visualising it as well for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, like, I'm not sure, and the, the I don't know has anybody ever held the world title for Bama and Cage Warriors. I'm not too sure, but I would definitely, you know, like like to play that card. Um, as for like, you know, I'll fight anybody in the division. I really don't like. It's not as if like they would have me fight for the belt and then I wouldn't defend it. Like Soren back, uh, I think it's black and white that he's he's ducked Jack Grant. You know, like like we when you're a champion, you can't can't be ducked and fight. So I would happily take that role of being the champion that fights everyone. Do you got a preference of where you fight? I know you you'll fight anyone, but it's in London. You, you still you don't care where it's at. No, I fought like my last. I think my last five fights have been in the UK, so Aye. like I don't mind. But you know, mm. I, you know, I'd like to fight in like I'd like to fight in like a, a European card, like a Copenhagen or Aye. where else they go. I'd like that too. So reach profile a wee bit. Aye, good man. That's 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 tidy. Hey, let's get to Perry then because we've not even spoke about him. Um, tidy striker in the MMA world. Let's just cut to the chase. How, how do you rate him, Reese? What threats do you think he possesses? Yeah, he's good. He's tough. Uh, he's great. Um, I don't think he's the cleanest. Um, you know, I don't think everything's as skillful as as I can do it. But uh, he's he's uh, relentless, and he, and he he's a grinder. That's the main thing. You know, he's tough as nails. So he's very similar to a Terry Brazier kind of fight, in my opinion. I just think I'm the I'm the higher the higher class fighter, you know. I feel like I'm an A class fighter, where he's maybe a B class. Uh, I think my fight IQ is higher. I just, you know, I just think I bring more to the table than Perry does, and I think I what I do bring to the table, I do it better than what Perry does. So that's a, that's that's my take on Perry. But he's a fantastic opponent, you know. He's uh, he knocked out uh, Jackson in his last fight, yeah, so he's coming he's coming in here. He's he's obviously heavy hands and. I'm excited to throw down and and see how it goes, but there's only there's only, in my mind there's really only one way it is going to go. Awesome man, I love hearing that. I love you, folk. Visualize it. Um, not to keep up and back to to Brazier, but like I, I know what you're saying about the similar styles, and it's it's a nice comparison. Um, I had a wee rumor. Maybe you can clue me up. Maybe you can just tell me to shut up. But um, that, that that was a tough weight cut for yourself going into that fight with Brazier. Is that right, mate? Um. So, to be honest, the Terry one was probably probably one of the smoother ones I've had. Uh, I didn't actually... Some of the rehydration methods that I normally use weren't available, so maybe that was a wee bit different. But no, in terms of getting to the weight and stuff, no, it was... Uh, it, it's never it's never easy, but it's... Yeah, we got it done. It's just... With, I mean, I don't know the... the uh, your, yes, your, you embrace the skeleton and all that. Um, it's just like weight cutting's a, a topic we talk about, not just with fighters, but with like fans and anyone, um, you know, in, in this industry. It's, it can be dangerous depending on if you don't do it the right way, of course, but it um, sounds like you're you're pretty happy with, with getting down and doing the right thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm very professional in every approach and, like, I've took no half measures. I... 
I have people cooking my meals exactly how it needs to be, and I have a nutritionist who sends that person the meals to cook. So there's no, there's no half beats. Like you know, there's a, at this level of the game, you really can't be winging anything. So, Hi, um, everything that I have to eat is presented in front of me, and, and all I have to do is follow the instructions. You know, and and I think I think that's the best way for a professional athlete. Uh, but in the you know, no weight cutting's ever a hundred percent. Uh, see if we're bulletproof but I, I definitely get as close as I can Oh good stuff man, it's good to hear and it's going to be some scrap for sure, I'm really enjoying covering this journey of yours Reese. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to get you on and I love watching you fight mate and um, it, it's just it's just an honour man, I, 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 love, I love your stuff before I let you go mate, I just want to offer you the floor and let you shout out, sponsors, associates and family, friends, anyone you like mate it's, it's all yours Yeah I'd just like to thank anybody listening, anybody who shows me support in any shape or form uh, Cage Warriors 102 is just a, a, another another step closer to the end goal and yeah thanks to everybody supporting me on, on the way Reese Skeletal McKee thanks again for coming on so best of luck in one minute Cage Warriors thank you mate cheers to Reese for his time can't wait to see him back in the cage and next up it's Stanley Colchester to catch up with the hottest prospect in the middleweight division well, to and title Seth challenger Mr James Webb we'll continue with the coverage and build Cage Warriors 102 takes place in London and I'm pleased to say joining us at this time challenging for the middleweight title in the main event Mr James Webb James how you doing sir <laughs> I'm good man I'm real good pleasure um, really good yeah Absolute pleasure to have you on. I remember the first time I set eyes on you, Cage Warriors in 92, I was there for uh, New and Marcin thrown down, man, that big Polish boy. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oaft. Oh, yeah, you hit me, hit me hard then. Cracked you a couple <laughs> of times, big man, but aye, you weathered that storm, good clinch, good pressure, took him down, got the job done. Oh, I don't actually really remember much of that, but, um, yeah, got hit hard. Uh, things changed after that, you know, I was, I, was, I was a bit fucking careless of everything, you know, and uh, I deserved that shot, you know, so... You certainly, um, yeah. I, I, just, up, so I was looking change things oh, after. Chin, chin, that's what I said. Everybody sitting around us is thinking chin on that boy. Uh, <laughs> and you got it finished, there was like seconds to go, on it? If I remember right. Oh, it was one, one second. One second, one second aye. Yeah. Superb, man. That's it. Just grind yeah. that out. Don't look at the clock and yeah. get it done. Oh, I didn't look at the clock. I just knew I had a minute to finish him, and I was just, wow, I'll get that finished. Aye, man. Since, so, yeah, as soon as they got my arms around someone's neck, I should be finishing. So. <laughs> Is that how you got uh, involved in him? Was it a grappling background you, you came from? Mate? Yeah, I started doing some jiu-jitsu and then, um, some kickboxing, and that just sort of, like, opened the doors, you know, to MMA. Um, but I, I can't say, like, I was really set on doing it. I just used to just do it, just do the, you know, the training for fun, you know, and then, yeah. obviously, you, as you built, like, I think... I competed as a white belt a little bit, not too much. And then as a blue belt, purple belt, I competed a lot more, you know, because right. I started to like see the see the progression, start to win like English titles and British titles and nice. IBJJF titles and um, yeah, like like at one point I believe I, you know, I would have been one of the, the best guys at my weight at my belt in both blue and purple belts, you know. And um, mm. I still think I'm actually as a brown at my weight, but. <laughs> You gotta have that mindset. But I haven't really competed much jiu-jitsu recently, and I haven't competed for over a year now. But I, that's something I look to get back into because I was, you know, that's where I feel like I um, dealt with, can deal with like a, you know, the the pressure better now. You know, I put myself through those situations of competing and oh, wow. and all that. Yeah. So is that what you uh, call home? Is that Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Then is that like the foundation mm, for you? Mate? No, not really, man. I just take all. Oh yeah, anything. Whatever, anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's what makes you boys. I can make man. anywhere my home. All right, <laughs> good for you, lad. Before we get into <laughs> London, mate, and Cage Warriors, um, I know you were, were talking about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but maybe just yeah. close up and on your on your early days, your young life, was it martial arts growing up and that kind of thing, James? Um, no, not really, man. Like, I'm not, not too much. I used to just lo- love playing football, like every kid, you know, just right. always play football. That's all we ever did. Um, and then, like, me and some school friends. I used to feel that we were like on the wrong end of some other people sometimes. So like a few of us, <laughs> a few of us like joined like a a boxing club, like not for to box, just to do the fitness and um, just to like the discipline more than anything. Just to like we just thought we could learn to protect ourselves better. We did that for a few years, uh-huh. and then as soon as like the sport come to my town, pretty much I was there training. So um, as soon as it hit cold, stuff, boom, I was on it. So you're from Colchester, so what would have been... Colchester, London? Essex, yeah. So was it, London, was it London? Was it a big crowd that came to town or what? What was that? Um, will there be a big crowd? 
No, no, I'm saying you're saying like for, uh, when when it came to your town, like was it a big show oh. or was it just? Was oh it no, I was talking about when jujitsu when jujitsu came right. out. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, then 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 from there it just sort of like spiraled. You know, as soon as I started, I I committed to it full time. You know, um, and I haven't stopped now. I haven't stopped since. And, here I am. You've got the Here bug, I mate. Am. That's it. Hi, for sure. Yeah. Some journey, man. This this Cage Warrior run has been nothing short of spectacular. Three, uh, three, three finishes as well, right? Yeah, what? yeah. Momentum, man. I'm a sucker uh, for that. Tell us all about it. Um, I just I think it's like it's mainly the guys I'm around right now. You know, um, I come from a, a grappling team back home, which was all about finishing a lot of my um, jiu-jitsu competitions. I just finished people like Sabim. Uh-huh. Um, I wasn't very good at the old point thing. My my coach used to laugh and say, oh, I can't either get finished or finish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I tend to do more of the finishing in the competitions. Um, and then the same with MMA. Like as I come over to, to Dublin and I train under Chris, uh, Chris Fields and Tom King here. And they're both very similar mindset. You know, it's all about finishing. Like at the end of the day, like Chris says, like, if you're if you're getting the decision, you're you're drawing technically, you know. You're, right. you're getting like three people are giving you the win, you know. They're giving yeah. you the nod. It's all about finishing fights, and I just have that mentality like I'm going out there to finish, like, and that's what I'm in my head. I'm thinking I, I know I can put a pace on. I have a very good, very good gas tank. I work very hard on that. Yeah. Um, and I just I know I can set a pace, and I'm going to get that finish, you know. And I, you know, I have that belief in me. Good finish. And, that's an interesting mindset, man. Go for don't, you're not settling for. It almost sounds like your your guys are looking at it as not a defeat, but it's a disappointment, right? Yeah, it decision. is a defeat. Like, well, it's not you know, it's not a defeat technically on your record, but it is disappointing, Aye. you know. Aye. Like, it is disappointing. Like, I don't think you should be fighting to knock out decisions. You know, it's Aye. there to you're there to like beat people, and that's that. That's the mindset I have right now. Like, I'm I'm there to set a pace and to finish people and to finish them as quick as I can. You know, All right, so. It's there. It's just about getting in and out and on to the next one, you know. So, um, yeah, like that. that it's, it's something that's carried me, carried me like well so far. But um, it's been put on me a lot over the past sort of eighteen months from Chris. You know, like mm-hmm. this is what he wants to build. We're building a team over here that are finishing people, you know, and it's showing. You know, like we're doing. Like I believe our training's spectacular. We do stuff that no one does, and. Um, is showing the results are showing, you know, the team's on a serious streak right now, so, um, yeah. Tell us a wee bit more about SPG Sword, so we've got, it sounds like you've got, what, finishing moves and specialities in there, but maybe what's, <laughs> a, what's a typical day like, because they're, they're in Dublin, right, what's a typical day We're like? in Dublin, yeah, we're in North Dublin, a uh, typical day, I mean, it depends who the typical day's for, I mean, for me, it's your typical day, like, uh, we're doing early morning training, um, sort of around 10 30 11 30 between them we're training um and then i'm not training again until the evening with them guys you know um i come over to another place in near north, it's in north dublin still very close to where we are uh, right. malahide to the irish strength institute and um i'm here currently now and these guys here like just completely break me for strength and conditioning or my lifting or my speed like i'm just doing something constantly to improve myself and then in the evening i'm back either for the striking or the the BJJ, you know, the the normal sort of timetable classes. But I'm a big believer of doing the classes, you know. Like even That's like good, I'm man. one of the more experienced guys in the class as well. Aye. Obviously Tom Tom's a great black belt, really good black belt. Um but like his classes would mainly consist of like white and blue belts, you know, and mm-hmm. the odd purple maybe maybe the odd brown belt. Um but I still like I'll still be there, you know, like as that's where you're getting good, you know. Yeah. Um that is where you're getting good. I think too many people like the option of you know, just sparring and there's no improvement there, you know, um, no improvement whatsoever. So I'm always trying to like uh, better myself, always better in my skill set. I don't believe I've shown half of my capability yet, you know, I don't believe I have at all um, and I'm always getting better and because you're at like a sort of becoming to, I feel like there's getting a bit of momentum behind me. I'm, I feel like whatever gym I'm at, whether I be home in Essex or I'm here in Swords, like the guys mm. are here to ch- they're here to beat you up, you know. They're always <laughs> like, they're always trying to like get you, you know. So the training's really good, man. Very good. Sounds so. like uh, it's evolution is uh, 
as as a kind of your motto here with with. So, I mean, I love hearing that, man. I love hearing guys that you know high level yet they'll still come in with the class. I'm a blue belt at a Scottish Hit Squad, and like if I've if yeah. I've got like Paul Craig or somebody around me, man, like yeah, it just makes it so much better. You're giving back. You're making yourself improve, but you're you're giving back to us guys as well, man. It's yeah, no, yeah, it's true. Actually, I was someone said it to me yesterday, you know, and I I was a bit taken back by it, you know, because I I still see myself as a guy that you know turned yeah. up and start training you know that's, that's not, I don't see it any different but you mm-hmm. know people obviously see you being in classes that's very different so um, at the end of the day like yeah like I said like that's your that's your bread and butter that's what I'm improving I'm improving like by doing different like learning new techniques sparring with different bodies you know like if we just met up every day at 11 o'clock and rolled hard or sparred it doesn't there's very 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 I think there's very little improvement going to be happening in your game, you know, because you're yeah. always looking for your, you're always looking for your A game. Um, and I put my A game on when I'm doing my hard rounds against the pros. But when I'm like, you know, uh, trying to like better myself and rolling against the guys that aren't like the same level belt, I'm trying different stuff. You know, that's that's where you have to do it. You know, so yeah, absolutely. I think that's a big part of my my journey. You know, and I'll I'll continue to do that. You know, I'll still be in the classes and I'll still be. Uh, looking to get smashed. Looking <laughs> to get smashed, that's it, mate. <laughs> you're out, it sounds like you're out in Dublin quite a lot, but there's no Irish twang. They haven't got you yet, right? There's no... Uh, you sound nah, not really. Like, <laughs> yeah, I st- uh, yeah, yeah, I am still quite Essex. A lot of people a lot of people from Essex think I have a little bit of a twang. But, really? You get uh, shuffled? Yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Just some words, I think. I've been here nearly three years now. Though. I met Chris oh. literally three years to this week. I met him, you know. Oh. And obviously, he, he fell in love with me, and it's been like that ever since. So, find um, hilarious, man. Because who's uh, Robert Whiteford comes to mind when he was in the UFC? He trained at an American top team a lot, and then yeah. when, when he was coming back, I'm like, where the fuck's this American accent going from? Like, come on, <laughs> nah, just, it does happen. It does happen I, 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 I do still get to go home. Though. Like, I, I'm actually flying home tomorrow. Right, I've thanks. been here the whole weekend. Um, been here since last week, so being the last week, so I'm actually going home tomorrow. Um, but I'm not going home to rest or anything. I'm, I'm mainly going home to. Uh, spend time with my girlfriend and my family, but uh, I'll be training. I've got some savages back home where I am, so yeah. I'll be uh, I'll be training for sure. So it'll be oh, no well. easy work. Well, no doubt, but all of that stuff's important as well, though. Family, or good people around you as well. Yeah, it? well, you know what? Like I, uh, I, I, I've always pretty much done the same thing going home and stuff, but I've just found this balance of happiness and like where I am in my life. Mm. Like I'm very happy, and I almost find now being away from home too long sort of like plays on me a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's important to do what does make you happy, and you know? it keeps you keen, it keeps you hungry. So I just like I'm here pretty much, you know, four or five days every week. I'm, I come here, oh. I break my I break my balls here, you know. I do every class I can, I do everything I get asked of me, you know. Like I whatever Chris says, do I do, and I try and I try and impress him and do more than that, you know. And then I go home and I like, realistically I get one rest day a week, but it's nice to have that rest day and be, you know, like I get, like for instance, me and Chris went out on Sunday just travelling around Dublin for a little bit, but I can't ask that of him to spend the whole fucking day with me, you know, no, it's his own I, family, yeah, you know, so at least when I go home, my girlfriend has to put up with me, you know, she has to like, <laughs> <laughs> at least I've got someone to chat to. <laughs> That's it, man. Chris Field, so, I mean, like, he must be so important, not just in your corner, and, and imagine in your MMA career. Um, to tell us a wee bit about the house, housewife's choice, how important is he in your life, mate? Oh, massive, yeah, massive part. Um, very, very grateful that I met him. I'm very grateful for how he took me on as well. You know, he just sort of, he welcomed me from the beginning, you know. So, um, it was a, it, like, it couldn't have, like, been any better for me. And, like, he he bends over backwards for me as well, you know. Like, he, he organises, he, he he still sort of, like, manages me almost, you know. Mm-hmm. I suppose he fucking had enough of that. But he, <laughs> he, uh, he gets everything sorted for me. He sorts fucking sponsorships out for me. He sorts my train and he, he's the one who got me into the, to, like the Irish Strength Institute right now, he got me in with these guys, and um, he be, like he bends over backwards for me, lets me crash at his house like now because obviously the winter's fucking freezing out oh, here, it's God, real yeah. cold, mate, and the gym's cold, man. I spent a few nights sleeping like fully clothed, fully like, <laughs> yeah, I believe like, it. S- socks tucked into me sh- like trousers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. gloves on, <laughs> waking up like waking up freezing still. <laughs> yeah, I know. You uh, think that thing's gonna make a difference? It's like barely, right? Makes no difference. <laughs> But he like he's like he'll bring me into his house and he has no like he has no need to do that, you know. So Aye. um he's a massive part of what I'm doing. He's mainly the reason why I'm doing it at the moment, if I'm honest with you, you know. Like having him as a coach and a fucking very good friend is 
um, is pro- like it's propelling me into why why I see it as going to be a <clears throat> cracking future. So absolutely, um, yeah, I'm very grateful for him and Tom as well, the other owner of the of SPG Swords. You know, like I'm very grateful for him as well. He like he um he does you know he's 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 there to smash me and he's welcomed me as well. You know, like yeah. um, obviously you know, Chris. Chris could see the benefit in it for him, but sometimes I see like I mean I don't really compete jujitsu under Tom. Like I don't compete jujitsu really, so there's no not much benefit in it for for him, you know. But he took me in, like welcomed me. Um, he's probably fed up with me too, like you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, man. Shout out to both uh, those guys, though. That's that's awesome. Yeah, no, they're they're, fucking, they're great. And also back home as well, you know, like uh, Alan Pozo. He's head of CRS six. He's a big inspiration you know like he's he's that he's that coach that like pushed me in this direction he sort of said like, that's where you have to go you want to be good go mm-hmm. he could see that nothing nothing spectacular was going to happen around like the the area not the area that like, I was but like how how it was going and he was like if you want to be the best go train with the best guys and that's yeah. what I did so as I've got a lot of respect for all three of them they're, they're guys that want to push you to be the best you can be they let you do what you want there's no like there's nothing worse than the coach that sort of tries to hold you back I oh, think it's right. more about more about them than um, the person you're going to train with almost, you know, but I'm surrounded by guys that are like, go, go, better yourself, do this, do that, you know? Yeah, it's, like, so, it's people that probably, you know, see it in you and, and know the journey that you want to be on and they're like pointing you exactly, in the right direction. Yeah. Here's, here's yeah. where you go kind of thing, aye? Absolutely. That's it, yeah. Let's get so, to Thomas then, because both you boys, going for this vacant middleweight <laughs> round, um, I'm sure you know about the Norwegian fighter, but maybe tell me, tell me how you rate him, what, what kind of what kind of threats do you think he possesses, mate? I think he's good. I think he's good, man. I actually, I do rate him. Um, I think there's the threat everywhere, really. That's the beautiful thing about MMA. Like I haven't really sort yeah. of singled out any areas where I think um, isn't a threat. You know, like you can get caught early, dropped, caught early, dropped, and submitted. Fucking, there's <laughs> like any. I just have a very. I'm very confident in my skill set. You know, like. I don't believe I've actually showcased anything just yet. You know, how I sometimes can perform in the gym, I don't think I've shown in any fight just yet, you know. Um, I think he's a very good fighter, but I, if I'm honest with you, like I, I don't really focus too much on the fighter. I, I, I'm focused on me. I know I can I know I know can throw hands. I know they're heavy, and I know I can grapple against anyone. Um, and I'm very confident in that, you know, and I think if I can get to someone's back, I, I know that's over. So yeah. I'm just going to I'm just gonna work on my strengths. I'm going to go out and do me. Not concerned what he does, you know. I can't stop him doing anything. Um, I can't stop him throwing anything. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to set that pace and go. That's it. That's all you can do, man. If you can impose exactly, your yeah. game on someone else, then it's your fight, and it? that's exactly yeah, exactly. That's so. a that's a mindset you got to have. It's going to be some scrap yeah. for sure, and uh, no doubt. Uh, so you're just up the road, really. If it's London, Colchester. Yeah, bring, I'm not too far. I'm only about sixteen. You bring miles a away. you bring a big support for what I remember last time. It was a lot of noise, man. Yeah, there'll be a lot of noise this time as well. I've, I've sold those tickets. They've all gone. Um, nice. We're gonna have a big crowd there. I think it'll probably be one of the biggest I've bought the Cage Warriors, um, and I'm very excited for it. I. I I had the chat. I don't know if you know John Sloan. I had a chat with him the yeah, other day. Yeah, John will. Yeah. Um, I am very excited for Cage Warriors 102. I, I just feel something magical is going to happen, you know. And I can't see how anyone's taking that belt off me. I'm gonna. I will win that belt like this. I've never been more certain than anything, you know. Yeah. Like as, as certain as I am going to die one day, I'm going to win that belt. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's superb, <laughs> James. That's awesome, that's man. Awesome. That's a superb stuff, mate. Uh, I, I can't wait for a scrap, man, and, and everybody else is so excited. <laughs> I can't wait it. for a scrap either. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after speaking to you, now, man. That's cracking. Um, just no, one more business no before I let you go, mate. Just if, I'll, I'll just offer you the floor if you want to shout out sponsors or associates, family, friends, anyone you like, mate. It's, um, it's all yours. Do you know what? Like I've had the same sponsors on board. Um, for a while, they all know who they are. They're, they're fantastic. Um, I want to shout out the Irish Strength Institute, SPG Swords, um, and my friends and family, my partner for looking out for me and making this journey worth it. That's it. Yeah, superb stuff, mate. James Webb, best of luck at London, my friend. Um, I'll be down Thank there. Thank you so very much. we got a chance to catch up in person, but in the meantime, Definitely. thanks very much for coming on the show, bro. No problem, mate. Stay time, can't wait to see how that one goes down. Up next is an amazing chat with Decky McAleen, and I'd never spoken to the boy prior to this, but I got a chance to see him early doors, uh, watch, I think it was his first pro fight back in the day at Headhunters, 
I'm excited to get him on the show, man, and this chat did not disappoint. Got a real insight into the minds of one of the top prospects in the country, so can't wait for you to hear this one, guys. Sure Hello, to welcome to out. Martial Arts Chat Podcast. If we continue with the coverage and build Cage Warriors 102, it takes place in London in the sector of March, and I'm pleased to say, joined at this time, Team Torres, BGJ Fire himself, Mr. Decky McAleenan. Declan, how are you doing, my friend? You alright? All good, yeah. All good, just back in training, so everything going good. Pleasure to get you on, man. I remember the first time I lamped eyes on you was uh, Headhunters, man. <laughs> yeah. Hi. I was there to see Jerry Williamson, my man. Uh, he was ticking off a bucket list, getting uh, getting an MMA. He had, the, he had the bug, and uh, there was there was some buzz for you, man. I remember sitting my folk and I was saying, oh, watch out for this boy. You were fighting the boy for higher level, I forget his name. Yeah, uh, Alex Davison. Davison, that was the boy. That was Davison, aye. But hey, tidy man, you got to finish, and um, I was like, oh, there's, there's a boy for watching. Uh, yeah. And obviously, I was like, oh, I'll keep an eye on his, see how his MMA career goes, we'll get to that in space, I'm sure. But maybe just if you could close up, Dickie, just your, your journey into mixed martial arts, what made you want to do cage, <laughs> cage fighting for a living, mate? Cage fighting, huh? I, I started off whenever I was about eight or nine years old, I'd done karate, and uh, I was I travelled. I got on the national team by the time I was like 12 I think I got in the wow. I had the let on I was older than what I was so I could fight at a higher level Is that right? wow. so, so that's sort of I think whenever I was about 12 I think I was fighting 14 year olds you know, just sort of it was back whenever karate actually was a fighting sport it wasn't like game of tig right <laughs> that's it uh, <laughs> and then it sort of that was the that was the reason I had friends that were boxers and sort of played about done a wee bit of boxing done a wee bit of you know, this and that and obviously as every every young Irish lad growing up we played football and fought you know, like that <laughs> sort of as, same as every youngster really like, you know, uh, you can, yeah really football right. and fighting and then on the weekends I'd go away and compete in karate pretty much <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's we made we made the trip well, my parents made the trip most most weekdays to start off training a week club in Yerry, mm-hmm. and then whenever I got picked for the national team, then we would go to Dublin a couple of times a week uh-huh. to do my training down there, which was like an hour's drive away, right. and then an hour there and an hour home, which I done pretty much from when I was like twelve or thirteen up until I was maybe fifteen or sixteen. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, as I said, I just went away, travel, got, got to travel the world and, and fight in Japan and everything. That's uh, amazing, man. Doing karate. So you, got, you got to see the world at such a young age as well, got, man. Yeah, got got to travel, got experience. Like, the only continent that wasn't on was Australia. Wow. With, with John, like, that, that was, I never fought in America, but I, I got to go there, but... Uh, it was that was just sort of my life was growing up was just all about sort of fighting you know fighting sports and as I said like it was kind of like my life like we went to America on holidays and we seen a wee place like a wee martial arts place and I ended up uh-huh. on, on holidays in Florida going going getting my get my parents to stop to take me in so I could train you know from like such a young age like it's just sort of all the sort of new and done that's amazing, man, because most kids are going to Florida with their parents. They're going to Disneyland, and you're going to Florida, like, to, to look for a martial arts school as a kid. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, we, that's we, amazing. Yeah, we went, like, we did we did do everything, but we went away to the beach, and on the way to, on the way to one of the big beaches, I, I spotted something and tortured them the whole time just to take me back. Yeah. And then we got back in, and then they let me train there and let me do whatever, John. So it was, uh, it was good, like... Uh, and then obviously it was always the, the good thing like karate we used to fight where we cotton mitts and we small mitts and right. no shin yards and oh yeah I'm saying it sounds, so, it sounds painful if you, all you've yeah, got is just knuckle wraps is that right yeah that's the done the wee cotton mitts and then they turned the, the cotton mitts they done away with them then and then they got us like MMA puffy gloves done the seven six or seven ounce gloves oh aye aye they were kind of like them but the padding used to be terrible so you used to be able to like, get your knuckles like just gonna push the padding back and get your knuckles so you're still hitting with your fist look oh oh yeah here it's it was just the, the fun of the sport like don't used to be used to be good like it used to be fun but Hi. then i went to japan the second time was in it, it was really 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 like a game it wasn't that it wasn't a fight any just throughout the years the more and more they've tried to push it to the olympics uh-huh. yeah that's uh, yeah it, it turned into like it turned into a game of tag pretty much right. so i i would have always like even though the more 
we would have went, gone at them the further in that it, it would have went, I would have been, I would always try to stop the fight at the start by, by body kicks because if you had a, you had to knock someone out, you would have got disqualified, but you could get away with stopping them with body shots. So you would have got DQ'd if you, you I guess the name of the game is to strike people, right? But you would have got DQ'd for... For, for, for chaos? For out. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, because it was, uh, it was semi-contact. Right, right, I see, uh uh-huh. But then, with the body shots, it's kind of your own job to harden your own cords and that sort of way. Aye, aye, aye. So, so you get away with, with emptying them whenever kind the of body shots. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I, I would have, I, I'd have been out to try and stop them with a body shot, or, mm-hmm. uh, or get eight, if you get eight points clear, the fight was stopped at, so as well, like so, if you go like eight zero or ten two or something, as soon as you go eight points clear, the fight's over. Uh-huh. So towards the end, you could only I could only really stop people by getting eight points clear them because they started getting that strict that you couldn't even drop someone with a body shot. Crazy man. So <coughs> I was blue. so they started putting like more pads that we had to wear body shields and not allowed to hit the body and stuff. You no, know, like not allowed to like what, drive the kicks in and stuff. So. Uh-huh. I was I was fighting in Japan. I think I was fighting a German boy. I was be- beating two or three nil, and then I I was constantly going trying to finish the fight, you know, trying to get clear of the fight. Yeah. And he got a couple of points. He got a couple of points back, and then I think he was winning four three. I was saying uh, nothing than three nil. So then he was winning four three, and just run away from me. <laughs> so oh, what I what I would have done in the, in the past was have tried to clean him and then get disqualified and be like well I didn't lose because yeah. you're, you're lying in a heap like, you know? yeah your conscience is clear there now. <laughs> yeah so this time I didn't so I didn't want to be that fella that's you know there's him again to, like because I, I was sort of known for it like mm-hmm. I didn't want to be that one like oh there's him again doing it so Aye. I tried I sort of I tried to talk to him I tried to do everything I tried to get him to fight you know, to try and fight like to see what he would do and then I just pretty much came to sort of the conclusion in my head, look, this isn't for me. There's no point hurting someone just because you know, he's playing the game. Mm-hmm. They might try and hurt him, but I'm not playing the game. No, that's what I'm right. Aye. Was the and change just, because just, of the Olympics? Is that why the rules changed? Yeah, that's, they're, they're trying. They're, they're doing everything to try and get, a, get it away. Like, cause it used to be great. I used to come home and go... Oh, you might have got a broken nose or broken ribs or broke someone's <laughs> nose or broke something. Don't like and had a fight, like you yeah. would have been sore, like, yeah. which which is what you want. Like don't you if you're doing a fight in sport you want to do it. Do it right, fight. exactly, I <clears throat> so uh, I was I played about with the idea of like doing doing boxing because uh, one of my friends was a very good amateur boxing boxer and like level of amateur boxing in Ireland very, very high as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, I played about with that idea, and then I thought of it, and then I was like, "That's still, it's, I don't think it's enough." John, like I, I didn't think it was enough. Like so, I was like, "What's the only thing? If if I lose a fight, because boxing can be corrupt as well, and karate was very corrupt." I was mm-hmm. like, "If I lose a fight, I want it to fall on my shoulders, no one else's." So mm-hmm. I was like, "Fuck it, I'll I'll try MMA because if I can't submit someone, knock someone out." Stop someone! Do, don't like. There's so many ways to win the fight. Yeah. It's and if I can't do it, if I can't do it, then it should just rob me with a decision. Mm-hmm. Tough shit. That's my fault. Uh, yeah. So like, I, <laughs> I, I should have, I should have been able to stop the person. Yeah. So uh, that's how they meet in MMA. I think <coughs> started training in MMA at the end of August, uh, and during the end of summertime, and. Uh, I went hard trained for like a week or two, went holidays and came back and trained for like two months solid. Up until like up until the month of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Three months even. Two, two or three months. Mm-hmm. And then uh, just before Christmas came I, I sort of cleared all my bills, got all my Christmas shopping and all done. And then was like, Fuck it, I'm quitting my job and going full time wow. and training full time. That's amazing. So what a chance. What a chance you're taking uh, the other way. Yeah, that like that this is whenever I was eighteen or nineteen, like mm-hmm. so I was uh there's another Egypt with a sort of goal in my head that <laughs> this is what I'm gonna make my career out of you know, so like I s obviously a sign on the goal and uh, they would send you on different wee courses to do so they would. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
I'll never forget that the thing that sticks out in my head is I was I think I was five or six months months training and <clears throat> a couple of months on the door and I was in a course and I was telling the, the woman in the course she's like so what what are you going to do and so someone's like well I want to get back and I'm going to you know, I'm going to be a joiner and then someone else you know I've worked in a building site my whole life I want to be a taxi driver or something you know, something yeah. like that would come out and I was like I'm going to be I want to be an MMA fighter <laughs> and then they were like yeah but what John I got your hobby so John what, what job do you want to do and I was yeah. like no no I'm going to make this I'm going to make it a job and then they were like yeah well so what's your backup plan you know sort of like no, I mean, don't be stupid yes. uh, right. what's your backup plan you're only you know, you're trying to be I was trying to be clearly apparently going in front of everyone on the course what's your backup plan and I was like I honestly don't have one and then they were like well you have to you have to do this and I was like I don't I would rather completely invest myself into this mm -hmm. so whenever I'm 32 or 33 or 34 whenever I decide to call the day I'm not that easy sitting in the pub going oh, I could have done this and I could have yeah, done that no I, I can honestly say whenever I'm 33 or 34 I can go back to school get whatever qualifications I need and go and work in a building site. Mm -hmm. But whenever I'm that age, I can't decide, no, I'm going to give MMA a go. So I just cut all ties and, and said, fuck it, I'll go for it. That's amazing. And man. then a couple of years into it, I was going to get my shorts picked up, done for one of my fights. Mm -hmm. And uh, the boys in the wee printing shop, two doors down from the gym, were giving off that they couldn't get someone to work part, you know, like part time hours. Right. And I was like, I'll do it. So they gave me a job. I was doing like four hours a day on my time. So like I could go in, train in the morning, get showered in the gym, and then walk two doors down and go to work. Oh, and I then do. come out of work. I do. Do you know? So that them, like Kieran and Sean and Kim and sports, like there, they were, they allowed me, like, to take two or three weeks off to go to California they allowed me to take a month off to go to Brazil and, you know, like, and they would just like they would do everything in their power to sort of to help mm -hmm. you know, like, as well as yes obviously they were my bosses and that but the, I was blessed to get two boys that were Sean was very very like good at judo and mm -hmm. a very high level of judo and Kearney was a very like he was high up the Irish league you know, playing football over here right so both of them know what John sort of they're of the same mindset as you it sounds like uh, yeah they, they, they were like yes we're we're happy to have as much as we can help you we'll help you aye. so like it was an absolute blessing like and then I worked with them right up until May last year uh, I got a sponsor that came on that told me to quit my job and everything and he'll John like he'll pay me like a monthly wage uh -huh. but uh that was full of false promises mm -hmm. that fell through after a while so now just the boys in the gym have been letting me take the personal training and let me do wee bits about the gym so there, therefore like now I'm making a good wage and I'm in the gym doing, doing my own thing that's great man what a great story I love to hear that you've, you've yeah. stuck to your dream and every, yeah, everybody's, and everybody's a, life throws obstacles in a way doesn't it but yeah man it's, yeah. it's how, how that, you deal with that that's, that's what makes you who you that's are that's it like uh, definitely, and that's like nothing. Nothing's gonna phase me. Like, John, I'm gonna like people. People have sat back and yap about things and give off about things. Like, I just sort of take it on the chin mm -hmm. and and get on with it. John, we'll deal with what's in front of us. You can't deal with. You can't control other people, and you can't control anything. That's why, like, I like being. That's why I like fighting. I like being in control, mm -hmm. and that's why. I, that's what brought me to MMA. It gave me the much the most control that if I wasn't able to do something. And with a pedigree can, of, of martial arts can, behind you as well, man, that stands you in good stead yeah, for sure. Yeah, John, like I, I can say, like that that's my fault. That's mm -hmm. yes, people are going to get out and blame referees and blame judges and, <laughs> yeah. and blame that there. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, you're the fighter and you're the person that should have the capabilities of finishing that fight. Yes. So, man, up, you didn't do it. <laughs> Great philosophy for me. Yeah. Good to hear, man. Um, but from that time I saw you fight at Headhunters, uh, the next time I, your name popped up uh, on a podcast was we were getting matched with Niall Smith, Mr. Spinning Backfist. Um, yeah. And I remember thinking, oh, I, I, I didn't know how many fights you had in between Headhunters and them, but I remember thinking, but yeah, step up. Obviously, Niall was a yeah, good that was, experience. That one fight. So that was the very next fight, was that right? You went from that no, to now? No, I, I, I knocked a, a fought in 
in, in Scotland. So you had a fight cancelled. My first fight back from the injury was in Cage Warriors in London in like February time. Right. And I, and I re injured the injury there. And then I took time off and I was meant to fight in July, July or August mm-hmm. in Cork. And the fella pulled out the day of Wayne's. He didn't have his visa sorted for travelling. Jesus. He was coming from like, he was living in Sweden, but he was like Turkish or he was you know, some sort of over in Turkey's, Turkey kind of area, you know, like whether or not any, he wasn't in the EU, so he couldn't travel. Right. Uh-huh. Right. So the fight was cancelled, so then uh, the boy that run Headhunters hey, got Snedden. in touch with me right. on, like, on, the, on the Sunday. Uh-huh. He was like, who's your coach? We will, don't we get you a fight? Mm-hmm. So I sent him a coach's name then. had a fight a couple of weeks later then. So then that was September, at the end of September. And then I had right. Cage Legacy. I said, as, a fa- as sort of you screwed me over, you didn't get me a fight. Come to Neary. Like, we're, I'll sell out any, anywhere you go in Neary. Come to Neary. Let me fight in my, own, in my hometown right. as payback. Mm-hmm. Or, so as payback for, for like not getting me a fight. Uh-huh. So they said, right, okay, and they got me a fight where I fought a fella that had beat Nal Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam, no, Adam, Gustav, someone Gustav. He's fighting a Bellator now. Right. He's fighting, uh, and I knocked him out with a flying knee. Nice. <laughs> so uh, then I think, yeah, then I fought. Uh, then I fought Nile Smith, so I was coming off a flying knee knockout. Uh, so it was a flying knee off. versus a spinning back fist then, is that how that was built? Yeah, that was <laughs> it, yeah. Uh, and then that, that was a good fight with, uh, with Nile. Uh, it was sort of, I just used my range and picked them apart for a wee while. I knew the spinning back fist was coming, mm-hmm. and it was close. Like, it, it didn't hit me, but thank God, because I've seen him then, I was at on top yeah, Stevie uh, McIntosh when it aye he popped him out yeah that. and mm. he fucking cleaned him with that like yeah. you know so it was one of them ones I sort of uh, there's, there's a madness behind my way of fighting that it's not just crazy go on and thankfully for that both the two boys fought my my last two fights both fought that day one fought in Ireland and one fought obviously now fought in Scotland uh-huh. and both of them had dropped the two opponents with the two things that I, I I was sort of not worried about but the two the two weapons that they're two main weapons yeah. one was a big left hook and one was a spinning back fist and, and thank god neither of them touched me aye man and you got him to the ground and it was a, you finished it was a choke wasn't it you, you finished him uh, yeah it was uh, a tri- triangle to arm boy or an arm boy in a triangle nice mate I think it was uh, a few of your boys on that card because I've, I've met uh, who's your man Rudy Lavery he was meant to be fighting on top really? and then some some killers you've got there, man. You tidy. Yeah, we, he's we he's were a fella, really Mickey. Um, I've got to see him fight his Mickey Pereira. That's a fella. Aye, oh, man. Churning out killers, or what? Yeah, yeah Rarely didn't Rarely didn't make it over to Scotland. He had uh, he had tore something in his hip. He was meant to fight Reese. Aye, oh, that's right. Reece Hardy took the fight in a week's notice. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then we had Oshin Duffy that was his first MMA fight. He played young fella. He just turned eighteen. Aye man, you've uh, got some tidy fighters there. What's a typical day like at, at Team Torres, man? How's it how's it work over there? It's good, I like, think there's today. There was uh Jitsu on this morning, then there was Thai boxing on at lunchtime, um, we had MMA then I took the kids and teenagers. Nice. Then we had MMS born and then we'd wrestling. Or, yeah, MMS born and wrestling, so and then after that I didn't do it, but there was Thai boxing on in the evening. You know, there's there's loads, there's plenty of there's a pl- there's a lot of mix like you know. Aye, plenty to keep you busy and keep you sharp, no doubt, mate. Cause it's yeah, and like as well, there's like plenty of like plenty of gi classes, plenty of no gi classes, wrestling, striking. So you put the gi on then when you're rolling as well. You don't mind getting there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of men yeah, guys man. don't do that. That which baffles me, man. It's yeah. like I get no, you're not using I the gi in the cage, but it's got to be all yeah, fast. Yeah, like, but it's it's. Unless you get, like, we have some very, very high level competition uh, guys in our gym that do, like, a lot of impractical things for MMA. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I'm, I'm a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu as well. But I, uh, my game's old school, like, you know, 
shut you down and submit you. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because I, I, I don't, I've competed at every level, but I haven't I only got my pedal belt last year or the year before, I'm not too sure, but I haven't got a chance to compete yet. But I've won competitions at each, like white and blue, uh-huh. gi and no gi, just because uh-huh. just I wanted to, just to keep busy. Mm-hmm. But uh, I never, I uh, haven't got a chance yet to compete at purple belt, but... I will do like I've competed in the European like the ABGJF Europeans and stuff I got through a few rounds and done, done like I've been I mean it's got to uh, help isn't it it's, it's got to be uh, t- I know some guys used to want to do their thing whatever but I mean you want to be improving in all facets and like you said man it may not be practical but it's got to be a help rather than a hindrance isn't it Gee, if you're sitting if you're, if you're in the gym with a gate on your rolling it's better than sitting in the house Exactly, mate. Then exactly. You're going to pick something up, like, you know. Yeah. And uh, I use it for fun. That's why I try stuff that I don't, that I wouldn't necessarily right. try no gi. Uh-huh. And then, John, like, I just play and I don't, I don't care what happens if I'm wearing a gi because this isn't what I do. Yeah, yeah. That's and good then, And then you pick up things and then you pick up things and then it's like, gee, I can, if I did that there and I, I just lose that grip but then I can get this or I can grab, you know, like, mm-hmm. and then it, it transfers over. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Ah, it's a good thing I have in your life for sure, mate. We spoke a wee bit about Alpha Male just before the show. Um, just tell us, man. You, you, I, I didn't realise you've been out so many times. How you, how you enjoying things in uh, California, mate? Yeah, it's the first thing is it's a lot better the weather now. We've been on the way, <laughs> <it's under> 20 <laughs> degrees, like the sunshine. So I came home the first night. I was home and it was snowing, so it was like uh, everything was froze. <laughs> but uh, it, it was great. Now this time, this is the first time of a night just on my own. Right. And yeah, uh, yeah. I usually stay with a boy called Dave Rowan. He's uh, an Instagram team alpha dad. Anyone, don't anyone that's sort of looking, you get in touch with him. Right, I see. But uh, we, I've been over that many times now that me and him have made sort of like a, we, me and him will be very close, like. Uh-huh. And uh, any time I'm over, I stay at his house and there's a wee granny flat out the back, so <laughs> I'm away to myself pretty much, like, you know. So you're, you come round and say you're not even annoying him, though. Like, Aye. you just sort of you've your own wee, you've everything in your own room, you know. And obviously, everybody that goes on about the wrestling. Is that is that what you feel you made the improvements being over there so many times? Is that the wrestling? Yeah, helps? yeah. It's more like it was at the start it was a pick between Duke Rufus's and Alpha Male. That was my that was my two choices. Right. And um, one was going from a striking to get to make my what's meant to be my my, my, my best at, like my best attribute to, to make it better mm-hmm. or it was what's every what's every European fighter really missing oh yeah right. so, so John so is it either go and work on your strong point and just get destroyed by wrestlers or go mm-hmm. and work on your weak point so that therefore now I'm comfortable wrestling with whoever mm-hmm. uh, just straight up wrestling against like all these guys that just wrestled and then add in the MMA, add in the strikes, add in everything, and then I'm comfortable. So, like, instead of just going and being caught, like, really, really focusing on being one dimensional, mm-hmm. I've went and learned everything else. So now I've got loads of answers for, for wrestlers. And, like, that last time I was over, as I was saying, as trainer was the world champion, uh, Lee, I can't think, I think it's Chapman or something, or Chapman, I can't think of his second name mm-hmm. off the top of my head. But he's, he's an older man, but he's like a couple of time world champion and favourite told me like he's one of the best ever. Like rest, just straight up wrestlers he never fought. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I got a private, uh, first day in Monday morning, Faber was like, uh, Lee, take that, you over there and take him for a private. Nice. And uh, <clears throat> got like a private for a while then, at him looking over me as I was training. Then like uh, the early morning class, like I think got two or three sort of one to ones with Faber all on all sort of wrestling and grappling exchanges and series uh, we went then went and watched the UFC and broke down fights and stuff uh, with with Faber uh, and look they, they take a lot, I've done a lot of work with Andre Feely he's got a I think he's fighting Miles Jury next right nice for who's uh, who'd be a tall sort of striker oh, right. so uh most of uh, most, I've done a lot of work with him, and then we travelled up the CSA, where you have the likes of uh, Gaston Paolo Lois, the dream killer. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
he fights on Bellator. You've probably seen. Do you know who? Do you know who I'm talking about? No. Who's that? Sorry. Uh, Gaston Belol or Babalos or something. The mm. brain killer. He's called. Fighting Bellator. Did you say? Fighting Bellator. He knocked the fella out with the spinning elbow. I think I know who exactly who you're talking about. As soon as you said spinning elbow, I I think I've been on the goal. Yeah, the one where your bike just goes stiff and does like a tumble. That's right. Yeah, Gaston uh, is it Bolanos? I think his name was. Aye, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, man, that was that was last year. I want to say. Aye. Yeah, same with him and another boy, Eddie Abasolo. He's like a world champion Thai boxer. So I was going to Alpha Male for for all the MMA on the my wrestling, my boxing, my striking, but then I was also going up twice a week to CSA, Andre Feely would take me up, and we would get like our straight up kickboxing, tie boxing, sparring and training up there as well. Uh, so it was great, like I got, I really did get a, a mix of everything, like on some of the days it's maybe doing five sessions a day. Like. That's amazing, man. You're doing all the right things, kid. You're, you're, you want to evolve in this game, don't you? And, and if, if you yeah. can absorb it, be a sponge, man. That's what it is. At this stage, be a that's sponge. What it is. That's exactly what it is. Like, don't be afraid to learn. Yeah, man. And I like what you said about, you know, do I want to sharpen the tools that I've already got or do I want to, you know, beef up my toolbox with different things, especially with the rest of them. That's yeah. a big thing in the UK, man. You're right. Like, it's... Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> I was going to say lacking. That's for want of a better word in the UK. Yeah. It's, um, it's but something that's even like Nad was over whenever he was there uh, Nad Naramani Naramani hi, I know Naramani hi. What he, he was over there I've done a bit of training with him before but came home as well but it, it's good like because you're training with players like my training it was with Nad with Darren Elkins bit of striking with Josh Hammett Andre Feely like there's four very very good Getting further away from the UFC. Why? Why? Do you know, like, so who who else do you want to train with? And like, coming now to to moving up to get like, there's not going to be much difference in my opposition in Cage Warriors. It's not as if I could fight bums like both like the fella I fought in Scotland. He was coming off a knockout and he had fought Cage Warriors as well. Right. It's aye. just the the were smaller shows, but I was still fighting ranked opponents uh-huh. so was, everyone that I fought was above me so it's not as if I was one of these boys that was fighting someone 0-1-0 oh, and 0-1-2 oh, and, oh, and, and as you said with Niall Smith Niall Smith had 10 pro fights or 11 pro fights yeah, man. and I had 3 aye big step up no, so, no but that, like, as I said I have a lifetime of training behind me so like the same as this next fight this fella has a lot of fights but I'm confident in, in my abilities I'm, I'm I'm right, nice with a lifetime of training. Like, you know, I've nearly caught my 17 or 18 years of experience. That's great to Steve, so, man. He's, cause he's, he bounced back nicely. Last time I spoke, um, I don't know if I caught Steve, but obviously he got my boy Paul McBain for his troubles. But I, he got a finish uh, after that, I'm sure. Was it Bennett or something? Um, no, no, it was, a, it was a victory over Josh Abraham, I think. Maybe it was Bennett in there as well. Um, how, how, how'd you rate yeah, him? But, He's a good tough fighter for me. It's like, you know, I think, not really think too much. To be honest, I don't get caught up too much because opponents change. Like, I, I'm working on better myself. Yeah. Uh, but, focused. don't get me wrong, St- Steve's a 12 pro win. There's nothing to turn your nose up at. Like, he knows uh-huh. what he's doing. And he's, he's a good, tough type opponent, like, so. So, like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you. Tell you all the shit about him and start trying to sell him. No. Like, <laughs> I'm no fishing for that, mate. No. The, the, no, no, but the fight's going to happen. Don't yeah. like, at the end of the day, I could sit here and we could talk shit. And don't like, it's just going to come across mm-hmm. wrong. And that's not that's not who I am. That's not what to do. It will show up and shake his hands away. And if if he wants, if he wants, don't like, as you said, I grew up fighting. If he wants to fight, we'll fight. If mm-hmm. he doesn't, don't like, we'll, we'll do it the way we should do it. We shake hands, see each other in the cage. Will fight and will shake hands. Mm-hmm. I know. You know if if, I, if anyone wants any more than that with me, we can get more. Like you know, but if, if not, that that's what I want. I want to go shake someone's hand because at the end of the day, it's a sport. You no, know, well, that that's what it is. There's no point. We're not all Conor McGregor. You know, like we all can't <laughs> yeah. do that. Like you know, yeah, you can talk shit. You're not going to get into my head. But after the fight's over, I still don't think the fight's over. You know, like, if you talk shit about there's certain things, 
if you talk shit and, and bring up that they're not finished with the sport you know whenever you start bringing people's families people's countries people's everything in that a fight in a cage doesn't doesn't settle it don't think that's don't, don't think you're going to be talking shit and then I'm going to be shaking your hand yeah no that is a, that's a dangerous line to cross but I mean you'll get guys yeah. it sounds like obviously not like yourself but you will get guys that, that will just say that oh it's just it's just business it's just business and they'll they'll do yeah, the shit it, talk it, and not, cross that line you know that, 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 whenever the fight's over it's not over then you know, yeah. like that's, and, that, and that, like there's no reason why like what me and Steve are two good fighters, so we don't have to talk shit and let him. We don't like each other. I'm not going to go any... If he starts talking shit, I'm not going to fight any harder to try and knock him out. I'm still going to try and knock him out. Yeah, of course, mate. Aye. Do, you know, do you know, and, and he's coming to do the exact same thing against me. Yeah. So, we don't have... We don't like, what's... Talking shit's not going to make it exciting. You know, the, the fact that two boys come in to fight, that's going to make it exciting, right? To play devil's advocate, I suppose you could say maybe going to bring more outside eyes if two guys are talking shit. For, for, you know what I mean, like for casual uh, fans. But if po- like post post clips of his knockouts and post clips of mine, Aye. and then, like, I, I, if you if you follow my social media, I, I'm never talking bad about anyone else. I'm I'm a hundred percent focused on my goal and my dream. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't need a bad mouth anyone else to, to, to make my dream any better. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'll post stuff about me and post post clips of my training and stuff. And like, if you don't get excited with some of my knockouts, it doesn't, like, they, they speak for themselves. They don't They don't need bad mouth from someone else. Yeah. They yeah. just post it up and, you know, like, the countdown's on, like, the fight's on, it's going to happen. And that's what's good about me. I, I have proper fans they're not they're not wannabes they're not this the respect like they're not going to start talking shit about him and trying to like jump on the bandwagon and stuff they're good so they they know what they're talking about and uh, they enjoy fighting but at the end of the day they know there's two people that's coming out to fight it's not their job to put him down aye absolutely mate oh, well said lad I hate to ask fighters to look too far ahead but if you get this W man that's six in the trot three in cage warriors what would you be looking yeah. to get at 2019 if you get the victory here if I get the victory, I want to get being a white contender series is something I want to get on. Nice. If uh, if not, maybe <clears throat> another fight or two in cage warriors to try and get the belt. If if I'm still if if we're not going down the route of going to America, I want the cage warriors belt. If I can fast track it and get the get the contender series or something, mm-hmm. I want I want that. Like, so you have your eye on this uh, Truman Soren back fight then coming up? Yes. Yeah. 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 He's moved down from that's lightweight, like, all right. He's vacated this. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's uh, that's a good fight. Like two two good tough tough fighters. Like mm-hmm. Dean done well to win that bad. Why for sure? And Soren back's no joke, man. He's some grappler. Yeah, very very good. But uh, Truman surprised me as well. I thought I had Aiden Lee winning the fight. I think a lot of people did, mate. We did a wee uh, thing with the media with severe MMA and that, and that, that was a pick. That was a pick going into that fight. It was going to be Aiden Lee's yeah. contest, but it's MMA, man. He's done well. He showed, he showed his nerve and he showed his skills, so congrats, like, done yeah. well to him. Oh, good scrap. Fair play. Well, Dickie, it's been an absolute pleasure to get your time uh, here in Marsalt's chat. Just one more thing before I let you go, pal. Um, I just want to give you the chance to shout out sponsors, associates, family, friends, anyone you like, mate. It's all yours. Yeah, just as always, a share with my family, close friends, and of course, my wife. This is the first time like, she let me go away as, as her husband. You know, every other time I've just been a boyfriend. Right. So this is the first time I've been getting away as a married, you know, as what a married man. Uh, then the sponsors, you have DM Meat, Philly Butchers and Yuri, Karen Markey, Neil Grayman, my hairdresser. Uh, I have Yannick McGee Nutrition, he's a sort of high level nutritionist. Right Fitness, all the boys, Team Torres, Mary Muay Thai, Team Alpha Male, The Unit in Belfast, and uh, North South Carpentry. Just all the, everyone, everyone that's helped me along the way, a main sport consultancy. I don't know if I make a list, so I don't forget anyone. And <laughs> <laughs> KMS Sports, the boys at KMS Sports as well. That's awesome, man. It's been a pleasure. Uh, if I missed anyone, I'm sorry. I'm thanks, thanks for you get so many people that love you, mate. That's what it is. And uh, I'm, I'm enjoying watching your fights and I'm enjoying this wee journey of, uh, of following your body of work, mate. Um, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to get you on. Best of luck at London, my friend, and 
Okay, I'm only going to back on again soon, buddy. Glad to hear, just let me know. Thank you for having me. Thanks very much. Finally on the show we wrap up with the guy I've been trying to go on for a while actually and I'm delighted that he's finally here, former four Mr. Conor McGregor, it's Steve the Spartan. Hello, Hello welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast, continuing with the coverage I build. Cage Warriors 102 takes place London the 2nd of March and I'm delighted to say we're joined at this time by the Spartan Steve O'Keefe. Stephen, how are you doing sir? I'm good John, thank you, thank you for having me on. Absolute pleasure, mate. Absolute pleasure. And, and before we get into Cage Warriors and all the good stuff, it's uh, it's coming up. Um, maybe just if we can turn the clock back a wee bit. Actually, I was going to go right back to the start, but we were speaking just a wee bit before. Um, the first time I set eyes on you was uh, I was a chubby guy doing Muay Thai at the grip house, and one of the boys that I was training with was like, oh, I should check out Cage Warriors. Our man Dean Riley's fighting on it, and, and you were the guy that choked him out, and that was that. Um, yeah, your... I, I, I enjoyed that fight. It was, uh, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I think it was like 53 seconds. Um, it was quick, man. But was a funny story comes with that one, actually. I um, I kind of really misjudged my warm-up time. And uh, a, a couple of fights, they moved they moved the break. And then a couple of fights got pulled from the card. Right. So I was, I was watching one of my friends fight. And then someone said, oh, why aren't you warming up? I was like, well, I've got a few fights there. Like, no, no, you're next. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh no! I literally had one fight. My mate's fight finished. I had that one more fight, and then I was on. So I kind of ran upstairs and got ready. I weren't even warm, and the adrenaline just hit the roof. So yeah, it was interesting on that one. Oh man, like I would be panicking if it was obviously I'm an amateur. Right? I would be panicking if that's me. You just got to roll with it, I guess. Right at that point. Yeah, yeah. You could, I kind of had something in my head that I was going to do, which was what I finished the fight with. To be honest. Um, mm. I know Dean throws some really good straight shots, so I was kind of trying to anticipate the shot to try and get the head and arm head and arm choke. But I managed to get it up against the cage, I think, in the end, um, and I kind of threw him with it. But yeah, that's that's that one of my favourite actual finishes. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Happy days, man. But let's go right back to the start because I was reading somewhere you you started off taekwondo. Was that was that your traditional yeah. martial arts growing up? Tells me a bit about that, mate. Yeah, so I um I started Taekwondo in primary school. I think I was like year five in primary school, well. um, maybe eight or nine. And um, yeah, I started that and kind of run with that all the way through to kind of my late teens. Really, I was on the I was on the national squad, but they, it wasn't an Olympic sport at the time, or it just started to become. Um, and yeah, it, it went really well. I won, won world championships and at junior and senior level. So. It's, uh, I still try to incorporate a lot of that into my training, maybe not training, but I, I seem to pull off a lot of flashy kicks and sparring. Yeah, man, I've got, because I grew up in Taekwondo as well, I've seen those 360 turning kicks you do and stuff, and aye, man, it's, it brings a smile on my face when I see throw people yeah. for proper techniques, you know. I'm going to catch I'm gonna catch one of them one day. I think, <laughs> the, closest, I think the closest one I was, I, I, I was, the one I was closest to catching was um, Artem. When I fought Artem, and I was like, I, I, was, I felt the end of his nose. On right. my, <laughs> it was like the beginning of the second round, but the way the, the camera panned around, you couldn't actually see it properly. Right, right. right. Uh, but I remember the uh, I remember Josh Palmer, the commentator, said that, that was like an inch away from getting knocked out because that right, was, it, it would have as well because the way his hands were down too. Yeah, yeah. If you do, so that's, that's it, man. Like people can have a go at taekwondo, but uh, it's, legit techniques connect, and it's lights out. Do you know what I mean? You, you. Yeah. I did taekwondo. I started at ten. I was quite similar. I, I sort of chucked it when I was seventeen. But I mean, I, I never got knocked out, but I saw a lot of friends, you know, get sparked, and it just yeah. takes one person to zig and not zag. And oof. I think that exactly, it. and I think I think a lot of the time, people, if you time the kicks into the movement, it it. If someone's slipping one way and you throw a kick at the same time, yeah. we've seen that happen so many times. We've seen double on it, double on it. Yeah, aye, aye, good times, man. So, where does the MMA come into your life then, mate? How does Taekwondo graduate into this crazy world of MMA? Um, I didn't start MMA till I was twenty-three. Um, I kind of, I, I, was, I went for a, a phase of when I finished doing martial arts and I moved out of London, moved down to Kent. Um, I started playing football. I played football at a reasonable level. Um, and then I, I just got got bored of football. I was I couldn't stand I couldn't stand the people. I couldn't stand <laughs> the players. Like it, it just wasn't the right environment for me, man. What was it you couldn't stand about it? Was just like the just I don't know, like the the way people like I got, 
the way people used to talk to me on the football pitch, I, just, I couldn't take it. <laughs> Say things and they were getting away with it. Was that probably what was it? No, uh, they weren't getting away with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I got sent off every single season at least once, uh, and decided it, it wasn't for me. You know, like yeah. you, you can stand in the cage with someone and beat the crap out of each other for fifteen minutes, oh, wow. and then and do you know what I mean? There's no even even in the in the big fights where there's a lot of build up and people shake hands afterwards and it's all good you know you're playing a football yeah. pitch on a Saturday or Sunday morning and people are trying to kill you and they're calling you all, all sorts you know I know it's crazy man what, 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 exactly what a weird existence like there's probably more abuse from fans at a football game than there would be at any uh, any MMA fight I've ever seen yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I love it <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, I was playing football for a few seasons and got bored of that and then I just started hitting the gym really lifting um, and then a, a major gym opened near my house. I joined that and yeah, kind of rest is history really. Just started training. I think within six months I had my first fight, my first amateur fight. And then a few months after that I had my second amateur fight. And then I couldn't get any more um, amateur. This was back in 2010. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't get any more amateur fights. Um, obviously it wasn't as, uh, like the standards weren't there like it is today. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up fighting Diego Vital as my uh, pro debut, and he was already five and zero. So yeah, I ended up fighting him for like a title because no one else would fight him. And uh, yeah, I lost in the second round to a rear naked. I think I was still a jiu-jitsu white belt at the time, and he was a purple belt. And yeah, I ended up getting choked. And well, to be honest, it, was, it wasn't even the choke; it was the, it was it wasn't even across my throat; it was across my chin. Um, but I was so gassed that I couldn't breathe anyway. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Those are the worst, it's, man. When you're yeah, tapping your yeah. gas, and you're just like, oh, there, fuck. There was, that's it. There was lessons learnt there, you know. Like, yeah. I, I came in, I was too big. I weren't fit enough. I didn't really learn those lessons in my amateur career, which is obviously good these days that people are yeah. so many amateur players. But when I was amateur, I think the fight, the first fight was like a minute. The second one was like... 40 seconds you know so yeah that's not what you want at all man yeah you want uh, you want as much cage time as possible army don't you yeah definitely I might look, my guys go for like 15 amateur fights you know it's, yeah, I think wow. it's great tell us um, a bit about that I know you were talking about sorry we're talking about your journey but um, you were just because you were mentioning about your coaching duties and stuff like tell us a wee bit how maybe we're jumping forward here I've got ADD I don't know just tell us a wee bit about like your coaching and some of your guys and how you're how you're enjoying that side of things mate yeah, so I don't, I've got I've got my own gym. Um, so the gym I represent is my is my gym. <coughs> um, but yeah, I, I stopped fighting in like 2013. I thought um, I lost two fights in a row. I lost to Connor and I lost to Chris Fishgold. Um, but uh, kind of a lot a lot changed at that point. Like when when I fought Connor, my wife was eight months pregnant, um, and obviously when I fought Chris, I had a newborn baby. Yeah working full time again and I kind of tried, tried to hold on to the dream but it weren't happening you know like I couldn't train at the level I needed to train at and work and pay the bills and you know it's was, it was too hard so I decided to knock it on the head um, kind of fast forward maybe four years and um, I opened my own gym and I've, st- I've still been competing not so much jiu-jitsu black belt now and I still compete at, at the big competitions and do well so um, I've, I've been improving the whole time. I'd never stop training. Is it you? You strike me as a kind of guy. You're like your traditional martial martial artist. Like when you were saying about you were, you felt you were white belt. or no, you were white belt level in grappling, and you wanted to learn from that. Is every day? It sounds cliche, man, but is every day a learning day for Steve O'Keefe? Yeah, definitely. Like um, I think it's uh, if you're not evolving like let's say just say jiu-jitsu for example if you're not evolving your jiu-jitsu game you're just not improving and everyone else is you know um especially the way the game is these days and it's so innovative and you got you got the whole kind of sub only rule set now as well it just changes things a lot it's just exactly the same as your striking you know like you stop you stop improving your timing goes your speed goes you tighten up There's there's a lot that happens so um, I've I've just been improving the whole time, and to be honest, I was I was coaching a lot. Um, my guys were doing well. I was fighting on Bellator, Cage Warriors, Bama, um, and I, I'm training with them every day. And it was um, one of my guys, uh, Joanie Scott, who's about to turn pro. 
um, you know, seven and oh, seven and oh amateur, and nice. three, three of those were on Cage Warriors actually. Um, he was like, he said to me, Steve, you should just fight because you're training like a full time athlete. All you've got to do is pay a little bit more attention to your diet and, and your and your S and C, and then that's it, you're ready. Um, and I was, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I did, and had my first fight back against Chris Fishgold, and then um, I thought um, on another promotion. I fought an um, Icelandic guy called Thor, and then uh, recently fought on Bama. Now I'm back with Cage Warriors. You must have had that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though. You, the, the the layoff four years. You must have still had an itch. I know you had ma- major responsibilities in life, but you must have just been desperate to l- continue leading the life that you'd, you'd led up to that point. No. Yeah, man. Every, every single time. Every t- every single time I take my guys to one of the shows. Yeah. Ah, uh, it yeah, it got me. It got me buzzing. I had the adrenaline like I, like I was fighting. No doubt, man. Uh, I, they'll be warming up and I'll be shadow boxing the court. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it, man. It, it never goes, man. It never yeah, goes. Yeah. And um, yeah, and no, I'm, I'm I'm glad I'm back now. And like I'm 32, um, but but like even like I said back then, like maybe a couple of years ago, just before I started back, I was looking at looking at the lightweight division. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll probably beat these guys now. Let alone after eight weeks of getting ready. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I'm, it's, it's good to be back, and I'm the best fighter I've ever been now. So it's, it's awesome. exciting, awesome man! I remember I was watching that fight, your, your return, because I'm sure you opened up with like it was it was, it was like a spinning, it was like a three sixty turning kick. Some people call it a tornado kick, or whatever. Tornado kick, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, and and I, I, I think a boy he, he scored like a wee hip toss or something. He got you down as well. I was looking a wee bit hairy. Yeah, and... I was um I was trying to. There's a little thing I do where I try and catch the arm behind their back. Uh-huh. Um, against the cage and I was kind of leaning into it too much and I felt my hips go over oh, and I was, like, oh. I was go. like oh shit I better drop my hips back <laughs> he, he popped it on quick and I was, I was on the way over I was like oh Steve you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> but so much, to be uh, honest it, in essence it's the worst thing he could have done you know like he was he was better off just leaning on like me leaning on him because as soon as, soon as it goes down to the ground I don't like I'm, I'm happy there you know? yeah, it was heel hook wasn't it that was a heel hook uh, finish, yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. Uh, crowd went nuts as well man they were absolutely buzz everybody was buzzing for you mate we were so we were delighted to see you back and then obviously ecstatic that that you got the finish as well man you might you must have been buzzing as well right yeah, yeah I, I i come to finish fights you know it's just, it's obviously there's a lot of kind of nerves and anxiety going into that fight um kind of questioning whether i'm ready or not but i kind of i just know i think your, your kind of confidence comes in your preparation right if you know you've done as much as you can then there's nothing else you can actually be worried or anxious about. Right? As you, you've trained as hard as you can. Regardless of your situation, if you're working full-time and you're getting all the training and you can outside of that, I think that was my problem before. Like, I was working full-time, um, but I was making excuses for myself. Like, back when I was fighting Connor and Chris, and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm too tired, I can't make training, or oh, I'm going to get to training late so I don't go. And it's like, I could have, I could have trained full time if I woke up at four in the morning and went training at eight at night you know but mm-hmm. it, but life gets in the way but I think just now the difference is I'll probably work harder now than I ever did before but now I kind of it's a little bit easier because I'm obviously have my gym yeah um, and it's but just my work ethic is different I don't want to ever be in that position again you know Fair play, man. That's really honest. To you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing with us. We, we were, you mentioned Connor a couple of times. Obviously, you got to share the cage with him um, at that time, mate. I, I believe it was like a title eliminator. You boys were, were yeah, yeah. Stuff, I mean, right? it, was, um, it was me and him, and the, the the winner would have fought for the title. And obviously, yeah, he won, and then fought for the title, and then won the lightweight belt not long after, didn't he? How did you rate him when you were sharing the cage with him? How did you? How did you get um, pretty skills? Man, back back then I could have I could have beat him, but it, obviously he's a phenomenal athlete now. But I think I think back then I had what was needed to to beat him, and mm-hmm. I don't think he obviously he wasn't nowhere near as he, as good as he is now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely had the skills to do it. I just didn't. My mind went in the right place, you know. Like I said, I just, I wasn't confident. I remember doing um, me and him done a radio interview on um, MMA Junkie, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that I think that day. Um, John Jones was fighting somebody so Dana White was on and Dana White was asked about the fight with me and Connor as well and I remember Connor's interview and he sounded so confident and obviously I'm, I'm telling everybody I'm confident but in my head I'm like shit now nah. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm, I'm not ready for this and, I, and I, even when I watch the fight now I hate to watch it because yeah. when 
I see myself walking down to the cage. It's not like I'm not there, you know, I'm yeah. not there. I'm not ready. I'm not myself. So, um, yeah, like he's a, he's a phenomenal athlete, isn't he? Like it's, you, you can't knock him for his effort. Oh, he, he could, he could just sit back and do nothing now, couldn't he? But he, he would keep taking fights that challenge him. Maybe he won't anymore. Maybe he'd take the fights that make him money, but like to, to go fight Nick, oh, sorry, Nate, and then lose and then do it again. And then, Go fight Mayweather, and you know, like he puts he puts himself there. Definitely right. does, man. Hi, hi. He puts himself out there, and that's just testament to a, to, a, to a great fighter. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like he's he's a guy who wants to fight martial artist or otherwise he wants to scrap, and that's that's what folk love seeing. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, no, I hate asking this next question, Steve, because I hate asking guys to 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 look far ahead. But we'll maybe get to Jai, um, and what threats can I th- you think he possesses? But also, if you can give me your thoughts. Maybe after Jai, because we've got the start of 2019 here. Just tell me, maybe also what the future holds for you, mate. Um, I'm not looking past. I'm not looking past Jai. He's like he's a challenge. He is a challenge. I've, I've been looking for that in a fight. To be honest with you, um, I've been the reason I went to from Cage Warriors to Bama is because I weren't getting the fight that I wanted, which was Soren back, and I was told that I couldn't fight Soren back. So. I was like, okay, well, that's the only fight that I want because he's the guy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to Bama and I did the same thing. They, I was meant to be fighting Reese McKee a few times. Um, that didn't happen. And I ended up fighting Martin Harris on Bama. Um, and then they tried getting me Terry Brazier, but it, I'm not going to point fingers, but Reese McKee didn't happen. Terry Brazier didn't happen. Um, so I got out of my contract with uh, Bama and went back to cage warriors and I, I, I ian dean said who do you want to fight and i said no, who's the guy you know i, I want to fight good fighters mm-hmm. i don't i don't, don't want to fight fight the fight fighters that are going to kind of maybe bump bump my record up but who, like is it really benefiting me i want to, i want fights that if i win that's it yeah um, so yeah to answer your question i'm not really looking past dry that that is my focus um but if in a few fights time i'm still winning then there's only one place I want to go, you know, and it's, again, it's not really for like I, I, I could have signed with Bellator already, um, and it's it's not a bad shout, you know. You look at you look at the card last night; it, it was all right. Fuck yeah, man! Uh, and when, when I'm looking at Tim Wild fighting uh, Primus on mm-hmm. the, the Birmingham card, I'm like, shit! Like I'd fight Primus. Like it's, that's, it's not an easy fight for anybody, but I'd, I'd want that fight. <laughs> yeah, man. I was um, wet the appetite, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I was, I, I was in Hawaii watching. I was in Hawaii when Primus and Chandler fought, and that was a great fight. Yeah, as well. man, some scrap. You were um, out in, you were out in Hawaii. What was what was out there? Was it a holiday? Or are you training? Uh, no, I had um, I had one of my guys on the card on the. Oh, Hawaii. right, right, right. I see. Um, but yeah, like I'd, I'd fight those guys. You know, I'd fight any lightweight that's ranked above me, and I, 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 it's always what I did. That's why I fought. Yeah. Art, Artem, That's why I fought Dean Riley. That's why I fought. Um, Chris Fishgold that's why I fought Connor because these guys were ranked above me and that's why mm. like if I'm not beating those guys then I don't deserve to be in, in it at the top tiers you know that's great man what an attitude to have yeah any young amateur fighter listening man listen to the exactly what Steve's saying that's the attitude to have aim for the next level and if you get it sky's the limit in it that's, that's yeah. sound advice mate well said Listen, you, you can pad your records but you're always going to get find out, found out you know like yeah. you your family and friends might think you're the man, but <laughs> yeah. it, it, anyone that can, can dig a little deeper, then they'll find out. Okay, who's this guy's for? Okay, he's like two and seven. You know, like it, it don't it doesn't take much to find out, and yeah, it's what it is, isn't it? Exactly, it is what it is. Just because you mentioned Soren back, I was chatting to him a couple of months back, and he's made the move down. Don't he? He's fighting um, Truman in at featherweight, so. Uh-huh. I don't know what happens with this belt. I don't know if they've vacated it or whatever, but is Soren back still on your mind at some point? Would you like to get that fight? Um, I, th- I think Soren back wins that fight and then goes to the UFC, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, but if, if it happens in the UFC, great, yeah. But I'm not fighting at 145. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. No, fair play, mate. Not a chance in hell I'm going to go in that low again. I'll, I'll fight guys that are 6 foot 5. I don't care, lad. I'll stay <laughs> Good I'll stay you. Light, I'll stay yeah. at lightweight. Um, but no, Soren back would have been a great fight, I think, stylistically. Like, yeah. he's, he's there for a war, you know. He, he always ends up with blood away from him, so just wouldn't have been my blood this time, you know. It would have been his, but <laughs> yeah, it, it, that would have been a good fucking fight, I think. 
Love to see it, man. Steve, absolute pleasure getting your time on the podcast. So before I let you go, eh, I just want to offer you the floor here, mate. If you want to shout out sponsors, associates, eh, what about some of your guys that you're training, family, friends, anyone you like, mate, it's, it's, it's all yours, man. Yeah, no, I'd just, uh, I'd just say thank you to all my training partners. Like I said, I don't really need anybody else. These guys get me ready for a fight. Um, and my sponsors, Eat Naked and um, Underground Gym and Prime Fitness at the moment. And yeah, we, we, we're doing we're doing good, you know. And I hope you guys see that when we, in a couple of weeks. Can't wait, man. Steve, for Spartan McGee. Thank you again for coming on the podcast, sir. And, and best of luck at Kate Jordan. Cheers, man. See you soon. Well, there you have it, guys. Cage Warriors 102, uh, just around the corner now in London, 2nd of March. Uh, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to us where you're listening, be it Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Speaker. It uh, would love for you to join us, join the chat, man, martial arts chat. Uh, if you want to like us on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com forward slash martial arts chat. Uh, and if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at martial arts chat there as well. I'm John Boy McElroy, and I'll catch you next time on the martial arts chat podcast.